Speaking of the walls closing in uh, and press freedom, I wanted to ask you about WikiLeaks founder Julian Assange. Uh, this month, Britain's highest court rejected an appeal from Julian, who's seeking to block his extradition to the United States. The ruling means the British Home Secretary will have the final decision on whether to turn Assange over to the Biden administration. He faces espionage charges that could bring up to 175 years in prison after he published classified Classified U.S. documents on WikiLeaks that exposed war crimes, you know, the Afghan war logs, the Iraq war logs, State Department documents going back decades. Now, Julian Assange's lawyers argue he could face prolonged solitary confinement in a U.S. supermax prison, conditions that are tantamount to torture. Chris Hedges, you were in London last week as a guest of the imprisoned WikiLeaks founder, Julian Assange, and Stella Morris, for their wedding, which they fought for in the maximum security Security Belmarsh Prison. And I just want to play what you said outside the prison. A society that prohibits the capacity to speak in truth extinguishes the capacity to live in justice. And this is why we are here today. Yes, all of us who know and admire Julian decry his prolonged suffering and the suffering of his family. So that's the Pulitzer Prize-winning journalist Chris Hedges speaking last week in London outside the Belmarsh prison. In January, we spoke to Stella Morris on Democracy Now! She was, at that time, the fiancé of Julian Assange. Physical health and his mental health are obviously um, deteriorating because he's only a man. He's a, he's a fighter. He's a strong person, a strong-willed person who believes in— um, in the work that he's done, uh, and the uh, he's a, aware that this is a this is a fight that um, against a monumental injustice. But there's only so much a man can take. Stella, um, since we've spoken, you had applied to be married. The two of you, uh, the prison forbade that, and then reversed their decision. And today, as you stood outside the new court ruling, uh, you said, "Today we won, but Julian continues to suffer. Julian must be freed." Your final 10-second comment. Well, you know, Julian. For every win that we get, Julian, Julian's situation doesn't seem to change. And this is punishment through process. And it has to end. The Biden administration should just drop this. We shouldn't have to be taking it through the UK justice system, because this is a political prosecution that was initiated by the Trump administration, and it is causing ongoing harm. So that's Stella Morris, now the wife of uh, Julian Assange and the mother of their two children. Um, Chris Hedges, if you can talk about what Julian Assange faces right now, um, does he have any final appeal, and why you believe he has been held for as long as he have, has before the Belmarsh prison, of course, taken refuge in the Ecuadorian embassy, where we— uh, interviewed him a number of times uh, in London. He had been granted political asylum. Well, there's been a long— uh, I mean, uh, let me just throw out that, uh, because UC Global, the Spanish security firm uh, in the embassy, filmed all of uh, Julian's meetings with his attorneys, revoking or uh, destroying the capacity for attorney-client privilege, the, the case shouldn't even be in court. This has been a kind of judicial farce. Julian did not commit a crime. Uh, in, in fact, the people who did commit the crimes, which he exposed, uh, have never been charged. Uh, he ripped back the veil in, in a way that no other publisher has done in our lifetime on the inner workings of power. Uh, whether it was the Bodesta emails or Vault 7, which exposed the ability of the CIA to hack everything, our smartphones, our televisions, even our cars, uh, uh, you know, the, or the Iraqi war logs, which you mentioned. Uh, and uh, the ruling elites have, are determined to destroy him. So, uh, Stella mentioned uh, his precarious condition, well, it's quite dire. We know I was in London covering the court trials, uh, or they're not trials, actually, the hearings about the extradition. And uh, he's been, was observed pacing his cell frantically, banging his head against the wall, hitting himself in the face, hallucinating, uh, calling the Samaritan hotline, 
because, in his words, he thought about committing suicide hundreds of times a day. Uh, he suffered a stroke. Uh, he's on antidepressants. Uh, they haul him off to the medical wing in isolation. He, he's crumbling. Uh, physically and psychologically, and I think that's the point. Uh, he can go back now if, if as expected, the Home Secretary uh, rules in favor of the extradition. He can go back to the lower court, uh, which uh, blocked his extradition based on his potential for being a suicide risk and the harsh conditions in American prisons. He can challenge the other points. This is a legal dance that. I suppose, could last up to a year. Meanwhile, he is, uh, of course, uh, deteriorating, uh, uh, but uh, everything looks as if it is engineered uh, to ship him off to uh, uh, Gordon Cromberg in the uh, e Eastern District uh, Court of Virginia, this, who's the kind of grand inquisitor. He persecuted my friend Samuel Arian for years and sent Daniel Hale, who exposed the widespread killing of civilians by the drone program, uh, into prison for 45 months. Uh, it, 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 those of us who have followed the case closely uh, have just watched uh, this burlesque of uh, it, it's kind of, uh, you know, it's more like the Lou Bianca or a show trial than it is the best of British jurisprudence, which I think is one of the reasons they make it so difficult to cover. And I just want to throw in, Amy, that there were six guests, including Craig Murray, uh, who, who's probably done the best coverage of the trial, and at the last minute, the prison denied us entry, uh, I suppose, because along with a photographer, I suppose, because uh, it's part of uh, making Julian disappear. There are no photos, no images of Julian other than that one in the police van, and after that they put shutters on the windows, so uh, photo photographers couldn't take pictures of him. Uh, uh, and, and that, I think, they didn't want us in there because, of course, we would write about it. I wrote about it anyway, um, because it renders him human and, and, I think, exposes the kind of suffering. Uh, inexcusable suffering that has been visited on him and his family and, of course, his two children and his father. So uh, it's absolutely appalling. And, and we criticize Vladimir Putin, as we should, for uh, press censorship. But uh, what about Julian? What about Julian Assange? So, um, it, again, it's like that kind of hypocrisy that uh, characterizes uh, the American ruling class and, unfortunately, much of the American media itself. So he has been held at Belmarsh for more than 1,000 days and, of course, in captivity in the Ecuadorian embassy, because if he stepped outside, he would be arrested for years before that. If you could end by talking about what he did expose, um, this trove of documents uh, for which many leading newspapers in this country and around the world, from El País uh, to uh, The New York Times, uh, won Pulitzer Prizes, The yeah. Guardian. Well, he exposed uh, the lies that were uh, told repeatedly about the wars in the Middle East, the 700 civilians who approached too closely to checkpoints and were all gunned down and killed, the torture, the routine torture in places like Abu Ghraib, the, uh, you know, a, a, along with the kind of uh, corruption. I mean, for instance, in Haiti, uh, he exposed cables that uh, uh, where the U.S. embassy was in collusion with the Haitian ruling class uh, to thwart any rise in the minimum wage. I don't know what the minimum wage is in Haiti. It's probably under a dollar an hour. I think it's 33 cents or something. Uh, I mean, this is just and and this, of course, sparked all sorts of. Remember the Arab Spring and uh, the pushback against the corrupt ruling class in Haiti, uh, it, it all came because of WikiLeaks. He exposed the duplicity of Hillary Clinton, uh, who was saying one thing to us on the campaign trail and accepting $675,000 to give three talks at Goldman Sachs, a sum so large it can only be considered a bribe. Uh, it, it exposed that she orchestrated the war in Libya uh, to burnish her own credentials. Uh, so it, it, it was. Uh, we have five the, seconds, Chris. The, 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 he, he provided the most important information, uh, I would argue, along with Ed Snowden of our generation, and they're, they're making sure that, um, that uh, he's crucified for it. Will you be suing YouTube? Huh. 
I'm right now. I'm just trying to save my shows, <laughs> but that's well, a good idea. <laughs> Chris Hedges, I want to thank you for being with us. Pulitzer Prize-winning journalist, award-winning author, and activist. Very happy birthday to Mike Burke. I'm Amy Goodman. Stay safe.